All right, StarCraft community, welcome to Discussions with Dead Zerg. So this is just a new idea I had for like a little podcast or video content um, that I would produce probably every week. And the main idea is just to have a discussion about something within the StarCraft universe, whether it be mechanical with the keyboard and a mouse, something like that, or philosophical about mentality and how to improve your mentality going into games or ladder sessions or even something about um, strategies specifically like what pro players are doing in pro league or what we've recently seen in tournaments such as heroes all in versus dark on frost so i kind of want to talk about everything and uh, for this first podcast what i'm going to focus on today is specifically attention in StarCraft. So attention is obviously one of the most important things within a StarCraft game. And the way that most pros end up talking about this when they're speaking about attention in StarCraft is they'll say something like, well, he just prioritized the correct things in that scenario or during crisis management, he had a really good prioritization of actions, something like that. Um, that's how pro is p- where he's putting his attention. He's prioritizing certain things over other things. If we think realistically, StarCraft is a game that's so fast that it's almost impossible to do everything, every single game perfectly. And if you don't believe me, download replay packs of pro players and watch them and really analyze logically and say, does this person do everything perfectly all the time? I'm sure you'll see mothership cores that aren't on patrol and marines that are sloppily rallied and I'm sure you'll see that they float money sometimes before building a key structure. Or perhaps even some units are mismicroed and lost in an engagement, which is usually the first kind of mistake that people point out. But many times, gases will be improperly saturated, mineral lines will have too many or too few workers, these kind of things. Now, why is why is a pro capable of making these mistakes? Zest can make these mistakes. He does, consistently. So what does that mean? How are they still the best players in the world? Well, it's very simple. They just know when their attention is needed and where their attention is needed most. And so by putting their attention in the correct place, they avoid making game ending mistakes like missing a baneling drop, things like that. So that's what I'm gonna be talking about today. Attention specifically in relation to StarCraft. And I hopefully won't make this podcast any longer than 15 minutes. So hopefully I can stay on point Um, on task and not go on too many tangents, but I do like talking about StarCraft, so we'll see. So basically when people talk about multitask, you obviously want to have good multitask, but what is multitask really? Multitask is just our perception of a player who is prioritizing well, which means to allocate attention to specific tasks in a way that produces the result of a one game, basically. So if you can allocate your attention in a way that makes it seem like you're managing five different tasks at the same time, well, then it seems like you've got good multitask. And all this is, is the fact that you're prioritizing your attention where it needs to be. For this reason, setting up aggressive tactics as a Terran player is actually easier than being the Protoss player defending it. Now, why is that the case? The case, that's the case because it shouldn't actually be race specific. It could be the the same way if a Protoss is setting up multi-prong harassment against any other race or a Zerg now with the new drop overlords in Legacy of the Void. So it's, it's completely on race specific. But if you were setting up the attack, you have the advantage in terms of attention. And so the way this works is because you know exactly where your attention needs to be during the attack you're doing. So say you're dropping lings, you're going to drop eight lings in Protoss's main base. And at the same time, 
Your army is outside his fourth base, and you have a Baneling drop in his natural. So you know he's already seen your army. Maybe you killed a zealot, something like that. At this point, you know his attention is on your army. And so when the drop overlord flies into his main base, at this moment, his attention will go to the alert, which is the lings being dropped. And so at that moment, if your overlord is also moving into the natural to drop the banelings, you have the advantage of attention. Because while he's dealing with the first alert, your second alert is your, the second alert which hasn't yet come you are already planning and already enacting. So the banelings are dropping out and then maybe he gets the alert and then his eyes go there. So because he's being reactive, it obviously it takes human beings time to react to anything. Like if you suddenly get shocked, oh no, it's going to take you maybe a second to actually enact anything. If you're going to run away, if you're going to hide, something like that, you can't make a conscious decision fast enough to just respond instantaneously. And so, in the same way, he'll respond to the first threat, and if your second threat is timed well, you, it, it will hit him during that time when he's responding to the first threat. So this is the goal. So this is one way to control attention. So if you're being aggressive, you're controlling your attention well, which is generally why players typically fall apart under pressure, because their attention is not able to keep up with the planning of their, other, of their opponent. So... One way to control your attention really well is to play aggressive styles. So that's, that's probably the first way. Um, the second way is to implement something called an attention order. This is something that I really like in my own personal play. So the idea with an attention order is basically it's a, it's a rebranding of build order. So build order is great, but build order doesn't tell you where your attention needs to be. And so attention order is like a sophisticated build order. It's a build order where you say, now I build the 18th probe, then I look at my scout probe and check and see if you went command center first. Then I go back to my main base and I build another pylon. Now this could seem overly complicated to someone, but what this attention order actually does is it gives you extreme consistency within a learned build. So if you're doing a build that you play every, maybe you play it every other game or maybe you play it once every day, if you've consistently learned that build, you're going to improve your consistency so much more by knowing exactly where your eyes need to be all the time. I need to look at this probe, then I need to look at this observer, then I need to look at these gates and transform them and warp in stalkers and then stare at the minimap because there's a mind drop coming, or there potentially could be. And if you order your attention like that during a build, what's going to happen is you're going to not miss supply depots you're going to not miss key things on the menu map. This strategy is best for attention um, specifically in all known scenarios. So this isn't going to catch things that are unknown. So yesterday I played against a Terran player and he did like a Wings of Liberty style uh, tech lab reactor two racks opening before command center. And he Macaraxed it. So that means for players who weren't playing during Maca's era means you build the barracks behind the minerals in your natural. So location I normally don't scout. This caught me off guard and I lost a game against it. And so in a scenario like that, this kind of attention order is not gonna help you. It's gonna help you catch everything that is possible. So everything that's possible in within the realm of what you know. So I know when Widow Mine drops appear. Those will always be caught by my attention order because I know where to put my attention when those mines are coming into my bases. Um, I can't miss it because I know at those moments I need to look at the minimap more and really prioritize that. So it's not a catch-all, but it is a way to improve consistency within a known build. It's just mapping out where is your attention at each moment during the build. So now I wanna, I'm gonna move from that. So the first thing is just playing aggressive styles. It's very general. Now we've got a little bit more specific. We're adding in where our attention needs to be during our builds. So first thing, first point, play aggressively. It allows you to control the tempo of attention throughout the game. The second thing, 
attention order. Know exactly where your attention needs to be at all moments during your build to catch all known counters or that kind of thing. The next thing I want to move to, the third point, is going to be called inserting actions. And I think this is getting a little bit more advanced, but it also is, it's a more catch-all for any circumstance, any scenario. So the idea behind this is that your hand speed, so the speed that you insert actions into the game, is directly related to your attention. So if, if it is hard for you to press a certain hotkey or to jump across the keyboard to press M for Marines like many Korean players do, that takes a certain amount of attention. Perhaps more because your brain has to calculate lifting up your arm and moving it across the keyboard instead of just pressing a key that it's already sitting on. That attention. Also, you may have hotkeys um, on your keyboard which you're uncomfortable using, such as camera locations or something like that. In a situation like that, it's going to take way more time for you to execute an action with a camera location than it will to, say, build a marine, if that's an action you, you use every single game, mech players exclu excluded. So in cases like this, if your hotkeys haven't been learned well enough, or if you're even slow to, produce, to use the hotkeys because they're mechanically challenging to execute, like a jump across the keyboard, or a stretch, a large stretch between two fingers, such as shift F5 might be a hard stretch for your hand. That's actually going to slow down where your attention goes because the majority of your attention is going to be caught up in how do I perform this mechanical action on my keyboard, right? You don't want that to be the case. And so if you, and obviously many players, um, my content is usually targeted towards higher level players. Um, if you're already in that state where you feel like your keyboard is just an extension of your mind, that's good. That's where inserting actions starts to come in. So when you no longer have to think about the mechanical aspect of playing the game, you can hopefully speed up each individual action. So perhaps a new player requires two seconds to, per to click on a barracks and build a marine. If you can do that in 0.2 of a second, that gives you a whole other um, 1.8 seconds to do something else over the player who's new to the game who takes two seconds to do it. During that time is when you can insert an action. And so this is what I'm saying. You have your build order. Maybe your build order is pylon, then gateway, then gas, right? If that's your build order at the opening of a game, there is time between each of those buildings where you can do an additional action or an additional two actions if your hand speed is fast enough, and you should. And so basically here, you want to, every time you're idling, so you're spamming or you're doing something that's idle, you're not moving if you prefer not to spam as a player, during that time, do a useful action. So a useful action is looking at the minimap, checking your supply, checking your minerals. Just do one of those things. Then go back, do another meaningful action, then insert another action like looking at the minimap, something like that. So that's going to be the next way to improve your attention because as each action takes less and less time, you normally think, oh, my APM goes up. The thing that you actually want to go up is you want your attention to more quickly change between things. Okay, I need to focus on building this pylon for less time, and that means now I can just stare at the minimap for a little bit more time. So insert actions, and by inserting actions, you're actually going to improve where your attention is going. You're going to improve sort of the speed at which your attention moves around. And so the last thing I want to talk about, the fourth point, which is probably the most specific, is you want to split your attention. And so this is sort of the true multitasking as I think of it in StarCraft. It's you want to split action, you, sorry, you want to split your attention whenever you can. So say you have to build three pylons because you realize 
you've been supply blocked. It doesn't actually matter why you're building the pylons. But say you have to build three pylons. Unless these pylons need to be in a critical key position, like for a cannon rush or something like that, you can stare at your minimap the entire time while you build those pylons. Put them in generalized locations. I need it in the center of my main base. Build it there. Just look and then look for one second to get the general area. Now yeah, that's where it needs to go. Move your mouse while staring at the minimap. Here's another, uh, another example. You need to make a warp in of units. Well, you don't need to stare at the units while you warp them in or while you box them and put them in your army control group. Instead, what you can do is while you're while you're spamming the warp in with rapid fire, you're just staring at your minimap. Then you box, and then you hockey the entire time you stare at your minimap. Say you need to add um, a unit to a queue. Well, you can stare at the building and watch it as it starts to produce the unit, or you can stare at the bottom portion of the screen while the unit pops into the queue and you see its progress bar show up and it starts building, or you can stare at your minerals and watch as they go down and as your supply goes up. Oh, maybe you need a pylon. Maybe you need to spend more money because you're floating something. You could also stare at the minimap while doing this and improve your global awareness by saying, what, what is the summary of the game that my units are telling me right now? Oh, I can't see any of his units or, oh, there's a medevac coming towards my main base. So. Those are, those are my main processes in improving attention. So the first one is going to be just play more aggressively. If you're playing more aggressively, usually you'll have the attention momentum. You are taking the other person's attention where you want it to go. And because of that, you're being proactive. You control where attention is within the game. Hopefully that makes them mess up their build a little bit. It's not going to mess you up. Because, the second point, you have an attention order. I know I do this drop, then that drop, then this push at the front, then pick up the first drop, then retreat with my army, the second drop just dies. Right? You have a nice attention order there. It guarantees damage to some extent. Hopefully, takes their attention where you want it to go. So, building in an attention order. That's an attention order, say, at the end of some build. Also during a build, it might be when I make my first warp in, I stare at the minimap because that's when drops come in. Then I look away, I build a pylon at my third. Then I stare at the minimap again and send my observers out to their positions because there is no mind drop in this game. Just one example. So then third, when we're getting more advanced and we want to catch more situations, every time we're going to be inserting actions between every other action we do. So. We want our mechanics to be at a level where it's smooth enough that we can just do actions almost instantaneously. And in the downtime between the actions, don't spam camera locations and, glaze, and let your eyes glaze over. Don't spam randomly through control groups and stare at your nexus or stare at SEVs mining. Stare at the minimap. Stare at your supply. Stare at your minerals. Stare at those things. Look at those things before doing the next action. And then finally is splitting attention. So memorize, go through and learn, not memorize, go through and learn which action actually requires you to look at it. Because I did this, I made a chart, and the number of actions that I actually have to look at 100% of the time is so small. Like, one of them is putting a zealot on hold position in a choke. Because sometimes against terrain, it's a little bit weird and you have to get it in the perfect position. I have to look at that when I do it. An action that doesn't require me to look at it is sending the mothership core to attack in my main base when I know a reaper's coming in. I can just send it in a generalized direction while staring at the minimap waiting for the reaper. Another action that doesn't require my eyes is building assimilators because the assimilator snaps to the geyser and it's going to be almost impossible to miss. I can just do it with my peripheral vision. Same with building additional pylons or gateways. I can stare at the minimap while I do this because I don't need to stare at the gateway while I build it. 
So these kind of things, knowing how you can split your attention is going to help you to maximize the time that you're looking at the minimap and overall improving your global awareness in a game of StarCraft. So I hope this is helpful. Uh, the title of the podcast or whatever it's going to be, maybe it'll be a vlog in the end, um, is Discussions with Deadzerk. So if you disagree with me, let me know. I'm always keen to learn new things. So anything, um, any comments, they're always helpful. Um, yeah, thanks for listening. I hope it was helpful.